Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church and Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. All right, well, hey, I've got a wonderful game plan. Today our story is coming to you out of the book of 1 Samuel. Everybody say 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel was written by a man that was named Samuel, and Samuel was a prophet. His job was to uh, tell people what uh, a message that God has for them. And so we're going to be talking about David all month long. This is the same David that killed the giant Goliath. This is uh, uh, an awesome, awesome story. So uh, here's the thing that you may not know about David is that he was picked to be king when he was very young. Uh, Samuel came and the Lord told him, this is the next king of Israel. And so he was anointed with oil to be the next king. But after that, he didn't become the king right away. He did go on to kill the giant Goliath. But the current king wasn't too happy with him, King Saul. As a matter of fact, he tried to kill David. And so David took his men that were loyal to him, and he was on a run for his life. To help me out with this story, what I thought would be kind of fun, because we're going to kind of see a battle royale. So I thought it would be fun if I can have uh, some friends help me out. We're going to do this, see this story if it played out like, uh, I don't know, like if, if you were in the boxing ring getting ready for a fight, okay? So uh, let's get the boxing ring going, all right? Now, yeah, oh, that's perfect. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to need somebody uh, to help me out over here. Uh, you, sir, right there. If you can just, yeah, just set your seat there. Come on down. All right, let's introduce who we've got in the first corner here. Give it in up for him. the red corner, all the way from Bethlehem, David, Woo! the giant yeah. slayer. All right, so I've got some boxing gloves for you, if you can put those on for me, all right? Don't punch me, especially not in the money maker. All right, so here we've got David. Now, the other person in our story, uh, his name is Nabal, and I'm going to need somebody who can help me out and play Nabal. Let's see. Um, how, about, how about right over here? Uh, yeah, come on up. Uh, perfect. Now, uh, Nabal, if you can stand over here, uh, I'll bring your props over to you. Now, here's what you should know about Nabal. He's not as uh, famous as when you hear about David. You want to go and put those on for me there? Yeah, don't punch And me. in the blue corner in his home territory of Carmel, it's Nabal Woo! the Fool. The, oh, I should tell you that your name Nabal actually means fool. Sorry about that. Uh, Here's what, here's what the Bible tells us. Everybody say 1 Samuel. It says, A certain man in Moab was very wealthy. He owned property uh, at, at, there at Carmel. He had 1,000 goats, 3,000 sheep. He was clipping the wool off the sheep in Carmel. His name was Nabal, which means fool, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was a wise and beautiful woman, but her husband was rude and mean in the way he treated others. So let me see your mean face, all right? Yeah, put those gloves up, all right? So here's the thing that you should know about David, is that David and his men took care of Nabal's shepherds. While they were there, they, they were like bodyguards for their shepherds. So they made sure, stand post, look tough for me here. Yeah, there you go. They made, yeah, nobody's getting by him. They made sure that nobody came and messed with his sheep and goats because people would do that. They would rob them, they would take their property, and they would steal from them. So they made sure that they didn't that, that didn't happen. Now, remember, David is on the run for his life right now. And so uh, listen to what David says. He sends a messenger to Nabal. And this is what he said. May you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family. And may things go well with everything that belongs to you. I hear that you're clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were here with us, we treated them well. The whole time, this, you got to stand post. you got to be a guard. All right. The whole time uh, they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was taken or stolen. Ask your servants. They'll tell you. We've, we've come to, 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 to you now at a happy time of the year. Please be kind to my men. Here's the big part. 
please give me and my men anything you can find for us. He was just saying, listen, I know that you've got a lot of resources. We did a lot of good for you. Can you please send us some supplies? So that message goes over here to Nabal. But remember what, what did the Bible tell us about Nabal? He was rude. He was a fool. So let me see your angry face. This is what he said. You can do a little shadow boxing on this part here, okay? Don't punch me. I'm going to stand over here. He said, who is this David? He must have not understood that this was the same David that took down Goliath. Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are running away from their master these days. Why should I give my bread and water? Why should I give away the meat that I've prepared to those who clip the wool off my sheep? Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? Basically, what, what Nabal did was he just gave David a big old slap in the face. Yeah, a lot like that. Now, David over here, this conflict is escalating. It's getting more and more. Listen to what David said. David said to his men, each of you put on your swords. So they did. David put on his sword, and about 400 men went up to David. What David said is, let's get ready to rumble, baby. All right? So we've got this fight that is brewing. Let's Nabal's a jerk. David's ready to let him have it and give him a peep of his mind. Let's get over here, David. Come on. Come on your way. Now, you'll remember, you'll remember that there was somebody else in our story. I need somebody to be Abigail for me. Right there. Come on up. Yeah. All right. You all ready for this? Yeah. Come on. Let's see those moves. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that Abigail was. Abigail was very wise. Oh, let's see if we can get this on you here. You're going to be our referee, all right, Abigail? Wow, why is this shirt so hard to put on? There we go. All right, yeah, you can poke your arms through there. So Abigail hears about this from the server. Come over here. You're on Nabal's side right now. A servant comes up and tells Abigail everything that's happening, and the scriptures tell us that Abigail didn't waste any time. She gathered 200 loaves of bread and two bottles of wine. The bottles were made out of animal skins. She got five sheep. They were ready to be cooked. She got a bushel of grain that had, that had been cooked. She got 100 raisin cakes, and she got 200 cakes pressed to figs. She loaded it all up on the backs of donkeys and made her way down. She comes up to this fight that's about to brew. Nabal doesn't even know that she's left. She comes over, and she blows the whistle on this whole thing, all right? Because at this point... What Abigail does is she bows down before David, and she offers to David everything that she had brought. Remember, all David wanted were some supplies. So Abigail brought all these supplies that you could imagine that David would need to take care of him and his men. And she told him, listen, my husband is a fool. That's what his name means. That's in the Bible. You can look it up. You should go home and read it for yourself from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. And so Abigail does this. And she tells him, listen, you can trust God. Basically, she tells him, you can trust that God will take care of Nabal. And you know what else is interesting? Earlier I mentioned that Nabal uh, said, who is this David? Well, Abigail actually talks about life being like a sling coming out of a stone. I kind of wonder if Abigail knew about David. Hmm? Isn't that interesting? And so listen to what David said. Uh, he, he said to Abigail, Give praise to the Lord. He is the God of Israel. He has sent you to me today. Yeah, hold those hands up like you're giving praise to God. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have shown a lot of good sense. You have kept me from killing Nabal and his men this day. You've kept me from using my own hands to get even. And he went on to say, go home in peace. I've heard your words. I'll do what you have asked. So this fight was about to brew. There was about to be a lot of bloodshed. It was about to get really nasty. Abigail came in and stepped in and saved the day, which means uh, this the boxing match. Round one, thanks to Abigail. That's right. Everyone. Everybody wins. Great job. Hold your hands up. We are all victorious because a fight didn't happen thanks to Abigail. Thank you guys so much for being my boxing partners up here. I'll take your thanks for you. Yeah, you can take those off. Just put them in the box over there. That's great. You can just take that shirt off later. You can go and grab a seat for now. All right. Yeah, you can go and grab a seat. That's okay. You can just leave it on for right now. Here is the point of this story. If Abigail didn't intervene, it would have been a bloodbath. Now, later, a few days later, Nabal was really foolish, and the Bible tells us that the Lord actually took his life. Nabal died. Here is the point. When we look at God's game plan for your life, making peace is part of God's plan. Some of us are like David. 
where we've had things happen to us that just aren't fair. We've helped somebody and they refuse to help us back. Some of us are like Abigail that we've stepped in and we were ready. We saw a conflict that wasn't even our conflict to be part of, but we stepped in and did something about it. And I think if we were really honest, we could all say that we've all been like Nabal, that we've been foolish and we've mistreated people and need to ask for forgiveness. Our bottom line today is making peace is part of God's plan. Would you guys say that with me? Making peace is part of God's plan. Listen, listen, first grader. Listen, second grader, third grader. 515 service, listen up too. Uh, you're gonna be listening to this too. God can use you to make peace with those who are around you. Jesus has called us to be peacemakers. You don't have to do it on your own. God will help you. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for your game plan for our life. Your plans ultimately went out. They are far better than our plans. I pray that you would help the boy, help the girl that's in this room or watching online right now, that you would help them to be a peacemaker. That maybe your Holy Spirit right in this moment would bring somebody to their mind that they need to go and apologize to. Or maybe somebody that they need to go stand up for. Or maybe somebody that they just need to forgive and let it go. Help them to do that this week. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.